welcome back. I'm Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. I am uh, ready to show you what we have here today. Uh, we have uh, Jude and Erlene, and they are uh, atop my beautiful bed of uh, alpaca, 70% uh, alpaca and 30% Rambouillet Faux Cashmere blend. And we did this last week on the drum carter. So this is a woolen prep, so it's super duper floofy. Um, what I have decided to do, and uh, we've been talking about uh, spinning uh, this um, Celtic Roots headband, which is a cabled headband, and I was thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to three-ply this because, you know, three-ply makes a nice round yarn, but uh, I haven't done a four-ply with you guys, so I think I'll do a four-ply, which will give me an even more round and beautiful yarn. Uh, this uh, also uh, has a little touch of uh, Stellina in it, uh, and it's gold, just the slightest hint of gold in there. So here we have our four singles that we're going to spin up. Let's get these on the wheel. I am very excited about this. I cannot wait. I'm going to spin my singles on my EEW6. So we're going to do the four singles that we divided for. I wanted to show you a couple cool things about this wheel. Uh, so I haven't been using it very long, although I was one of the... Um, uh, originals with the uh, Nano, which I love to use in the car, um, but I haven't done a lot of like major spins on this. Um, so I uh, wanted to show you some of the cool things. So uh, one of them is, this is the orifice hook here, and there's two little magnets and that holds the uh, orifice hook. Uh, apparently they had some difficulties uh, with, I don't know, somehow somebody put it on weird and it like got into some sort of gear and it shot across the room and they decided it would be hazardous, so they uh, released the files for 3D printing. And what I did was um, I got these two orifice uh, hooks um, 3D printed at my local library. Uh, and that's one of the things I love about Maurice at Dreaming Robots. Uh, you know, this is all 3D printed. Uh, well, most of it's 3D printed. This The spindle is uh, metal here on the flyer. Um, and uh, there's some... Uh, metal and plastic uh, bearings um, and the gears are metal of course um, so uh, usually uh, you have the uh, metal um, orifice hook but these two plastic ones are really cool and i got these two printed and you'll notice that i have this uh, 3d it's called an orifice reducer with twist control and the one that it comes with is this one and all it does is slide in like this. And this is the orifice reducer that it came with. And it's just nice and smooth. The thing I didn't like about that is, so use my uh, cool blue orifice uh, hook here. So the thing that I didn't like about this um, orifice hook, uh, or this orifice reducer is, there's no place to put your yarn on it when you're done doing whatever it is you're doing, you wanna pause. Uh, so I, um, they have on a thing of verse released uh, a lot of this stuff for free, and I got this. And this is the orifice reducer with twist control. It's the same size as the white one, um, but uh, it has just these little notches cut in it, and all it does is just hold your yarn, but I love it, it's so convenient and it's free, and I got all of these 3D printed at my library. I got these two and this orifice reducer for $1.25. Um, these are very flexible, and I got the thicker ones. They actually have thinner ones than this, um, but I thought they looked too thin. And, and they do store uh, nicely uh, right here on the side of uh, the, um, oops, of course I go to show you and I put it in backwards. It stores in this little slot here, and I would do it on the left-hand side. So uh, let's get started. Um, I have my e-spinner set to Z, and I have it on just shy of six. It's almost at six. I have my quarter's worth of fluff here. And this alpaca is so, so wonderful. Um, it really does lend itself uh, towards um, spinning thin. And this is a woolen prep, so uh, spinning woolen is gonna give us a nice floofiness. Um, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I have been uh, testing a little bit, and I think what I want is a 32 single, um, and that will uh, give me that uh, worsted to Aaron weight four ply when we finish. So here we go. 
see how this works on here. But this is like butter. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. Trying to see here. I'm always trying to work out with the e-spinner. I'm not used to only having my hands. And I feel like it gets away from me a little bit. Oh, look at this. It is just like spinning butter. It is so lovely. And I have so much of this lovely fiber. I'm going to dye some of it. And eventually, I know I talk about this like every video now because <laughs> it's getting closer. Eventually, I'm going to have my new drum carter. And I've been sort of holding off. I know I'd love to do a lot of uh, custom art bats. And, and you guys see me do tons and tons of art bats and blends. And I haven't been doing them because I'm, I, I keep thinking, oh, I'm going to wait for my new drum carter. I'm going to wait for my new drum carter. I, I hope it's here. It's supposed to be here in November. So I really, really, really hope it's here in November. So we're gonna stop here and then see how this is looking. And like I said, I want a 32 and uh, yeah, but the black background might be easier. I know I like white a lot, but um, I don't usually spin white. I like color, but I like my backgrounds to be white. So here's 32 and it's looking good and symmetrical. Symmetric? So let's check and see what our apply back test looks like. Look at that beautifulness and look at that beautiful halo. I'm very excited about this. So uh, I think that this is going to give me what I want. We'll see if I can uh, keep uh, consistent here. Again, in theory, it's easier to be consistent with an e-spinner uh, as opposed to my uh, good old Kromskys that I adore. Um, and I have talked lots about how I, I think the e-spinner is an awesome invention and I love it. But there's just something about the wheel that uh, really makes me happy. Um, so usually I'm a spinning wheel kind of girl, like treadle and old fashioned. But um, for, for this four ply, I think this is going to be perfect. And I, I, my plan is to ply it on here as well. I really can't say enough wonderful things about this fiber. It is so divine. I'm really excited to be able to get Cheryl this headband. I think it's going to be amazing. That's the other nice thing about the e-spinner is it's so fast. And I am doing a long draw with this, but I'm trying not to get too thin. I do love, this is really, alpaca is just... And this, this woolen prep is really lending itself towards the long draw. So I'm just sort of drawing. I could do this all day. <laughs> I don't know how much of this is on camera, but you can really pull this back. And I think the, the faux cashmere obviously is going to help too because it gives it some elasticity so it's less likely to break. I'm trying to think of something to say, but I'm just so mesmerized by this fiber that I have. I got nothing other than ooh, ah. <laughs> I hope you can see this. Maybe I should put this up here somewhere without getting in the way of my gear. The other thing I was thinking about, since I do have so much of this and it, the alpaca, and it is amazing, is um, spinning the yarn and then dyeing it. I typically don't spin then dye because uh, it's boring for me to spin white. That's the only reason. I mean, I you know, well, actually that's not true. There's more than one reason. One of the other things uh, that you can do um, that, that is better, I think, for dyeing uh, your top instead of dyeing the yarn is if you end up with a, like a patch of color or a color combination that comes together on the top that you don't particularly love, you can always just pick that piece out. Um, and you can't do that if you dye the yarn after you spin it. You just, you bought what it, you get what you get, you know? So that's one of the other reasons that I don't like to dye the yarn after it's spun. But maybe I'll make a maybe I'll make a uh, exception in this case. So all I'm doing here is I'm just put, peeling uh, strips off of my bat. and I'm just spinning, 
Just doing some uh, backward draw. Look at that, I love it. Okay, let's see if we get here. Look at that, oh my gosh, I love this. Um, look at this. That is the perfect single right there. I love it. We'll do a little bobbin check-in before we ply. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. We should just bob and check in now. Oh, and I don't think I showed you how the uh, twist thing works. I can't remember if I did or not. So it just wraps around like this and you can just pick whatever holes are convenient and then you can just let your fiber hang and you can take breaks and um, it works great. Here's our little bob and check in and it looks so good. Look at that. I love it. All right, I'll see you back here in just a sec when I have all four of these singles done and we'll start plying. It is plying day, yay! I'm so excited. Uh, so I have here my four singles uh, and they turned out really nice. Um, what I have, uh, and the hardest part about doing a four ply is finding four Lazy Kates. Uh, so these are the 3D printed ones that come with the uh, first version of the EEW6. Um, uh, they, they have new ones now. Actually, I think they're not out yet, but they'll be out very soon, I think uh, before December, uh, and they're much better than these. These are very lightweight. They tend to tip over, uh, but um, all three of these together, I think will be okay. I'll put them on the carpet. Uh, here is uh, Erlene hanging out, and uh, here is uh, my best bud, Jude, and they are giving us their seal of approval here. <laughs> So let's get this uh, on the floor. So these all uh, are modular and they hook together. They also are tensioned. Uh, so uh, my fourth Lazy Kate is making an appearance again here. I don't use it too often, but it's my Raisin Box Tensioned Lazy Kate and I just used um, some twine that I had. This is one of my dowels from my uh, Sonata uh, bobbin storage. And I just strung this through, put a hole in there and ta-da, Tensioned Lazy Kate. And you can see that it doesn't spin too much. And I can adjust this tighter. All I have to do is pull this and snug the, uh, I don't know what you call these things. They're the things that go on the end of like shoelaces and stuff and they're spring loaded, like drawstrings. I'm not sure what you call them, but I have a thousand of them. Uh, <laughs> so let's get this going. Oh, wait, one more thing. Uh, when you four ply. So I have this handy tool and uh, Amy King, who wrote a wonderful book, uh, called Spin Control, which is no longer available. So one of the things I learned from Amy King's uh, book is when you're doing a four ply, uh, you can hold them through your fingers, but you only have three really, you know, controllable spaces. I mean, you can control through here, but it's not as relaxing. Uh, so you can take the top of a spice uh, bottle and just run them through. They won't snag and tangle, and it, it gives you nice control. And then you just hold it in your hand like this and it's, you, know, you can shift your grip and it's very comfortable and uh, I have definitely used that with success. Uh, if you're spinning thicker four plies, just use one that has bigger holes. Before we start, look, we have our special guest, Nadine the Tornado is back. She's visiting with me. We're watching her this weekend. Hi, Nadine. Hi. You gonna be my friend today while we spin? Yeah. So here's Nadine, oh, she's the best dog ever. Little tornado though, she loves to play. So excuse my floor, I have toys, dog toys all over the place. So they're gonna be coming off of my Lazy Kate's, uh, mostly at the same angle, my Raisin Box a little bit taller, but uh, they will be coming off up here to my uh, handy dandy spice holder here. And that should help keep everything nice and organized so there's no catastrophes. Okay, let's see what we got here. And again, this is kind of uh, experimental for the speed and the draw. And the twist, ooh, it's already way too much twist. So I'm gonna slow this down, downtown. I'm gonna increase the draw and see what that does for us. That's better, a little better. Let's see what we have here. So when I stop here, that's lovely. Now that I like. Oh, that's nice too. 
I think I still want a little tiny bit more speed. But here we have it, and there's a lovely halo on this. Doesn't that look nice? I love it. And I think that we're going to be around that Aaron weight, maybe a heavy worsted. I'm thinking this is going to be like an 8 or a 9. And yeah, we're about an 8. And the other thing that I like is um, it's a nice, uh, it's soft. The plies are staying together, of course, marvelously. Uh, you know, this is going to have a nice halo, but it's not going to be so much that's going to ruin the cable effect. Uh, so uh, when we set this yarn, uh, when I wet set it, this will not be something that I'm going to thwack because I don't want more crazy halo. I want it just like this. Just look at how pretty four ply. Yes. All right, let's keep going here. So when you four ply, it, you want to make sure you have enough um, twist so that the fibers aren't going to fall apart when you're knitting. Uh, that is maddening. If you've ever had yarn like that, you know what I mean, uh, where it just splits uh, all the time. I don't like yarn like that. Uh, I'm always upset with it. <laughs> so this I like. Um, this is a little bit more twist in it than the, the uh, first bit here. And it is holding together really well. So when I take the tension off of this, it's not coming unraveled at all. Once I get the rhythm, then we can chat. <laughs> but since this is for somebody, I really want it to be perfect. Oh, I love this. I need to find something else to say though. So, um, we have, uh, I may have told you this already, maybe I didn't, I can't remember, but I'm really excited. Uh, we have Nadine visiting us, uh, and you know, my uh, sweet old Lucy uh, had uh, crossed the uh, Puppy Rainbow Ridge bridge in um, June, and uh, I've been very sad and lonely, and uh, now we are going, we have confirmation that we're gonna be getting a puppy in uh, the third week of January, so around January 20th. So I'm very excited. Meanwhile, we just try to take Nadine whenever we can because <laughs> she is just good for the soul, that Nadine. And I love her. She's very fun and playful, and she seems to have a sixth sense and knows not to touch anything wool. I mean, I can leave my stuff on the floor and everywhere, and she doesn't even, like, look at it but she like demolishes all the dog toys from uh, Lucy so it's uh it's awesome that she's so smart oh my gosh look at this very excited yeah I think we're gonna end up with an Aaron weight here it might be well no that's spot on eight can you see that that's an eight if we use the other one <laughs> this is the one that I think measures bigger <laughs> If you measure this one it says that it's a nine which is not true um I think this is an eight so all right, we're looking at Aaron Wait, I'm down with that. So you can see how nice this um, spice uh, lid works. Uh, and it's keeping everything organized, you know. And, and the other nice thing is I can stop too, and it doesn't get all jacked up. Mm -mm -mm, this is going to be gorgeous. I'm glad I made a little extra of this. I'll have enough for two headbands. I might make one for me. I already have one in green, but this is, uh, the green that I have was um, Rosie's Magical Top that I got from uh, the Woolery years ago. Uh, in fact, I think they were using it as the ad on their page for a while. Uh, the headband that I made, I'll, I'll put a picture of it at the end. It's a good picture. I like it because I'm, I'm young and thin. <laughs> I also wanted to talk to you about angle apply here. And we, it's really, really hard to see on white, so I sort of decided to abandon trying to show you. Um, and what I'm using for this really is mostly a feel in my experience, uh, which doesn't help you at all, I realize. Uh, let me get this and see um, if we can see any of it here. But uh, I have a little bit more twist in this one closer to the orifice, but I'm not mad at that. I like it. Um, the... Uh, did you hear? I'm not mad at that. Did you hear me say that? That's not even my lingo. I've been binge watching the Halloween baking championship and they keep saying, I'm not mad at that. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's see. 
It was about 30. It's very hard to see, but just so you know that it's at right at 30 degrees of twist for this. And I like it. It's, it's firm and it's very soft. It's not ropey at all. Um, it's, if you see here, I just want to show you this part. See how it stays together? The, the fibers aren't separating and splitting. That's what I want. That will make it a joy to knit with like butter. Um, like I said, when you get those, those, uh, uh, yarns that you buy and, and they split a lot, it's frustrating. Uh, so this won't do that. That's the best part about hand spinning. You can make everything exactly the way you like it. Uh, you can see this is uh, how I store it when I pause. And uh, you can see how nice it is. It's not twisting into a massive knot. The weight of this is just enough that it keeps everything from twisting. It's fantastic. Best trick ever. Here is our bobbin check-in. And uh, it's looking good. I love it. And you can see just that tiny bit of gold sparkle in there. And again, it's a very subtle amount. It's not going to like hit you in the face or anything, but it's just a tiny touch of elegance. Time for my favorite part of plying day. Let's get this off the nitty knotty. Uh, we have uh, four ply, alpaca 70% and 30%, ramboulet, uh, faux cashmere, and uh, a kiss of uh, gold uh, Angelina. Here we go. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Let me sit this down. Look at how pretty. And it has just the right amount of twist. It's not spinning back on itself. Looks great. Let's get this into soak. And I think we're gonna hit our um, worsted weight. I think we're gonna be spot on worsted, maybe a little bit thicker than that, but I think we're gonna be exactly where I want it to be. All right, here it is, hot out of the uh, sink. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do some snapping, but you can see already that it hangs a little bit nicer. Uh, and I haven't done anything to this yet, so we're going to start snapping. And all I do is just rotate it through my hands a little bit here. Give it a little snap. Rotate it a little bit more. Give it a little snap. And all I'm doing is just moving the uh, twist around just to distribute everything beautifully so that everything is twisted nicely. perfect world you'd hear a snap but this yarn is so soft and uh, it really doesn't need a lot of uh, manipulation. I'm gonna hang this up to dry and then we'll be back to see the final yarn. While we're waiting for my yarn to dry I uh, wanted to show you this uh, picture of the uh, Celtic Roots headband. This was the uh, Rosie's Magical Top. It was a three-ply and uh, it also has a little bit of uh, Angelina in it. Because the uh, yarn that uh, we're doing here is four ply, I think that it's gonna have even better cable definition. And um, I think it's gonna be a little fluffier too because it's a little bit thicker yarn. Now back to our final yarn. Look at this gorgeousness. It is so pretty. We ended up with a worsted weight uh, and it is so soft. Look at this beautiful halo, but not too much. Um, let me see if I can get this up better out of the a little bit of shadow it's in. Look at that. Oh my gosh. This is so wonderful. I hope there's enough to make two headbands because I'm pretty sure I want one. I will uh, start uh, knitting this, although I think we all know how fast I am at knitting. Um, so it'll be a little while for me to finish this project, uh, but I will make sure to put up some photos. Uh, also, I, I've uh, just had someone recently ask me uh, about finished works. Uh, I have an Instagram page and a Facebook page. It's JK Fiber Arts, and I always forget to mention it. And uh, I put all of my finished knitted items up on there if you ever want to see what they look like. I will um, see you guys next time. Until then, spin happy.